What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of La Liga Career Mode. This is episode number 33 and we started today's episode off on the back of the, well let's just say, very damaging result to Almeri. Yep, 3-0 loss to Almeri which ended our nice winning run of four games in all competitions. We also saw Jan Bryce Ateki go down with a dislocated shoulder and he's done for two months as well. The question is, how would we respond from that? Now, this season's been a wildly unpredictable one so far. We've had some good luck, we've had some bad luck, we've had some good wins, we've had some bad wins, or bad, bad losses. <laughs> you can't have a bad win. Well, I guess you can, but any win's good in my book. But even so, we've had some good form, bad form. It's just been a really unpredictable start to the season. And so the question was, saying it's the first game of today's episode, how would we respond? Because so far it seems as though if we win one, we could probably win two or three on the bounce. If we lose one, we'll lose two or three on the bounce. So that loss to Almeria was going to be followed by a trip to Catalonia to take on RCD Espanyol at a really nice RCD stadium. How would we respond? Well, how about this for a start? We get drubbed and thrashed by Almeria and embarrassed in our own backyard 3-0. We lose Jan Bryce Ateki to a two-month dislocated shoulder. Well, how about this for a start? Yep, five minutes into the game, it is second of the season in La Liga and third overall for our new speedy winger. Nico Williams fires one in from range and makes it 1-0. It probably should have been kept out, but hey, listen, we're going to take it as we do take the early lead. And right for the break, looking for a two-goal cushion here to double our lead. A couple of fabulous saves here to make up for the earlier error, if you will. So I don't think the Williams goal should have found a back in net, but as we know, goalkeepers this year, very, very poor at long-range efforts. We're still leading by a goal, though, and probably could have been two or three in it up at a break, but right before half-time, I think it was Nico Menemed on the ball right here, going for goal from a tight angle. Fabulous save by Luis Maximiano, kept us still leading by one. And after an action-packed first half, not much going on in the second, I'll be honest, with 20 minutes to go, a chance to wrap the points up. VR sent down the left-hand side and bends one in to the top corner and gives us the two-goal cushion and surely wraps the three points up. Do you remember what we were talking about so recently? How do you respond from a bad run? How do you pick yourself up? Well, sometimes you need to look to your most influential players, your best boys and your leaders as well. Antonio knows. He's wearing that armband this season. He's been made club captain. He might only be 18 years old, but bro, you got to lead this team, man, even as a youngster. He's doing so by example. Makes it 2-0. That would surely wrap the game. And whilst there was a wild own goal towards the end of the game. Look at it. I didn't realise this. Four minutes to go. Espanyol half the deficit. But thankfully, it was just a consolation goal. And we thoroughly deserved a win as well. It actually went down as an own goal through David Garcia. And when they had the ball just inside our area, the shot was taken. Or I thought it was a shot. And it was really weird because, like, when the ball hit the back of the net, I don't know whether you would have seen that um, in the highlight there. But I thought the, the man that received the ball must have been offside because it wasn't like a normal celebration or animation or follow through after the ball hit the back of the net when a player runs off to celebrate. I, I thought he must have been offside or something. What, what actually happened? And I wish I would have watched a replay and got it for you because I didn't realise it at first. What had happened is Garfi actually toe-poked the ball past Maximiano, totally unintentionally, of course. I didn't press the circle button or anything. I just ran into my man. And unfortunately, it had enough strength to divert past Maximiano and go down as an own goal. Thankfully, though, it was just an own goal, which was a consolation, and it wouldn't count for anything other than us losing our clean sheet. So following game and this was a big one here we're back to winning ways away at the RCD Stadium but now taking on Strasbourg traveling to France for this one here match day three in the Europa League group now right now Apoel and Strasbourg have one point each we've got three we're in second and Frankfurt have got back-to-back -back wins so heading into this game here we're in second but if we were to lose it not only would we lose our first of the two games against Strasbourg this season and that would mean on the head-to-head -head record theirs would be better than ours for the time being but also, we dropped to third in the table. And if Applewell could beat Frankfurt, we would even drop to fourth as well. So this was a big game here away in France. Match day three in Europa League. And simply put, I couldn't afford to lose. A draw wouldn't be a terrible result. It'll keep us three points clear of Strasbourg right now. But a loss would be absolutely disastrous. So heading into the game, we took the early lead through Randy and Tecker, who's been so big this season. But Strasbourg flipped the script. They led right before the break here. Still up by a goal as I was really struggling to contain their offense. We kept on peppering Strasbourg's shot where goal was shot right towards the end of the game. We kept on staying in attack mode and after a couple of brilliant saves. Fortunately, we got a little bit of luck, which sometimes you just need. A header on goal well saved, but who's there at the back post to turn in from close range? 
My goodness, this guy is on fire. Randy and Tekka once again. Fourth in the Europa League already to go along with five, which he scored in one game in La Liga. He's our top scorer this year in all competitions with nine goals so far. But our top scorer of the past two years, so Gaffer, I know him is in great form, but you can't drop me. Yeah, on a stroke of the hour mark, we would get back in front and it was the main man, Luis Javier Suarez, who got us back in front. Lovely 1-2 between him and Nico Williams. It's 3-2 Granada. We restore our lead, but unfortunately in this game, whilst I could continue to attack and get the goals, I simply couldn't defend. And that's my story and experience of FIFA 22. Capari sent through one one on one, dinks it over Maximiano and that is how the game would finish. Final score in France and what a fantastic game. Neither side deserved to lose this one. It was as balanced as it gets and a class game man. Did you know what? I love those games. I really do. 3-3 three, three to final score. It does mean at the halfway point Frankfurt, they're going to top this group it seems. Three points clear of us right now. They've won every single game. Oh, sorry, yeah, three points clear. They've won two and drawn one. But uh, Apoel right now, uh, they're bottom of the group. Strasbourg are in third. We do have the gap on Strasbourg after that draw there, but I, I, I still think with half the group to go, it's going to be tough now. We've got to make sure we win the next game against Strasbourg. If we can do that, then we're definitely going to qualify. If we don't do so, then it's going to be very nervy in the final two games. But yeah, at the moment, it's 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 you know th those are the games there where like this has been such an inconsistent start to the season man it's been wild it's been unpredictable but you know what i absolutely love it and just to break away from the immersion here for a second i've mentioned this before this is this is what's made this fifa so fun for me and you know a lot of people ask me you know like you know wh what's been like your favorite fifa over the, the past few years and i think that since the massive change from fifa 15 to fifa 16 I'm not sure I thoroughly enjoyed a FIFA as much as this one since FIFA 15. I, I really have loved this FIFA. And, you know, the main reason why is, is not because of the gameplay itself or the features or anything like that. It's because of the difficulty. It, it's so much harder this year. And I think the games as well, whilst they can at times be really frustrating when defense is almost impossible, I think that the the challenge has become so much greater now. And, you know, look, I, don't, I don't mean to, you know, blow smoke up my own, you know, what? But you go back a few years ago, and heading into games like that against Strasbourg, I could probably feel a completely weak inside and win the game reasonably easy because our team would be perceived as stronger, and I just felt I had the beating of the AI on most occasions. I mean, you know, you go back to like, like to FIFA 19, FIFA 20, for example, and sometimes, you know, it wasn't it wasn't that hard to take a, like a, a three, three and a half, four star team to the Champions League in two years, you know. Whereas now, it's become a lot more difficult. And I think that it's it's great, you know, because it means that as we beat Celta Vigo here and get back on track with a 3 0 victory in our following game in La Liga, Monchu bagging a brace in this game. Great to see his first two goals of the season. I think that. EA are finally starting to realise that ultimate should mean ultimate. Does that make sense? Like the, the highest difficulty should should be hard, you know. And I think in previous versions of FIFA, before Ultimate was introduced, legendary at times, and again I don't mean to sound arrogant, but at times, for those of us that do play Karimin a lot, legendary could be a little bit simple, especially because you might have exploits you could use. Whereas it's a lot more difficult now on Ultimate, and I, I really do give props to EA for that. We can criticize them a lot for the lack of improvement over the years, and no one can deny it. This game could be a lot better than it currently is, but they are taking steps in the right direction, no doubt about it. And I have to say the difficulty is one of the reasons why I've loved this game so much. That Strasbourg game, Drew 3-3. Free free. And you could say, man, that's frustrating, man. Like, seriously, that's a, that's a big slip up there. But it's it's kind of cool, you know? Like, it's, it's kind of cool to know that in those games there, they're not, they're not the bankers that they once used to be every single time. And they can be really fun to play. Sometimes you can lose a game but still have fun because of the challenge, the difficulty, and how the AI made you feel playing it as well. Even so, our fourth and final game today, back on track with a win against Celta Vigo and taking on SDI by away from home. Tough start for them this campaign, but after a first half where we saw Suarez hit the woodwork, well, sometimes you just need a little bit of luck, and we certainly got it there. Suarez hit the woodwork in the first half, and in the second half does the same, but this time the rebound doesn't drop to the goalkeeper, but it drops back to our number. Number nine heads in from close range. The Columbia makes it one nil, but Ibar would level it right before, so right after the hour mark. Romero with the finish. Maximiliano turning in from close range. Ibar find the equaliser, and in a really tough game like the Strasbourg one, once again I felt a better at being a better team. I felt I deserved to find a winner. We were still tied at one one. Couldn't afford a big slip up here against a side in Ibar that is struggling right now. One final chance with three minutes to go. Nico Williams offloads to Sugawari down the right hand side. Rolled into Diaz. Diaz across to Randy. 
Inteka. And Inteka does it once again. Randy Inteka wins the game for Granada. And what a season our number 17 is having. Yup, there are so many tough games in FIFA nowadays. Even the bankers can be really challenging. This one, no exception. But this is what you got to do. In these past four games here, only the Celta Vigo's win was a comfortable one. Other than that, a 2 1 win over Espanyol, a late winner here against Ibar, and a 3 3 draw against Strasbourg as well. I often talk about it. This is what you need to do if you're going to be successful. Even when you're not playing your best, even when you're struggling, even when you're tired, you've just got to. What is it? Grind it out. We do once again 2-1 victory over Ibar and Tekka's brilliant season 2 continues and as you can see that win there and a nice little streak for Granada as you bounce back from the Almeria loss puts us in to 4th place. 4 points behind the leaders and unbeaten Unai Emery side Villarreal a quarter of the way through the season in the top 4 but there's a long way to go in what has been a wildly unpredictable start to season 3 but that will end today's episode of La Liga Karima guys. Big thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it if you haven't please drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you for the next episode of La Liga Career Mode very soon.